Hello, I'm Stefan Greber, I'm the project leader for Lexday, and today uh, I'd like to go through another integration that exists uh, for Lexday. So there's already been a video on how to use uh, Ansible alongside Lexday to be able to deploy uh, workloads directly inside of Lexday instances. And well, another very common tool that's used um, by, by people most in the DevOps scene is uh, Terraform. Terraform is effectively, well, it's in my mind, kind of a step before Ansible. So Terraform is really about deploying everything on your cloud. Um, it could be things like setting up all of the um, well, users, ACLs, policy, all that kind of stuff, but also creating networks, creating storage volumes, creating instances. And then once, it's, once all of that is done, um, you could then start using something like Ansible to actually deploy your workload and then manage it from day to day uh, with Terraform still being able to effectively enforce that your cloud looks the way you expect it to look like. Um, again, it's, it's a tool that's extremely common uh, in the industry. I probably have far less experience with it than most people watching this video. Um, but one thing that's very interesting is that it supports a very wide um, variety of providers. And one of the providers that, that it supports uh, out of the, I don't remember how many, many they actually have. Um, we get, go look at the registry here. No. Um, out of all of those, one provider that's available is LexD. And that means that Terraform can be used uh, either against a local LexD or remote LexD to not only configure Lex LexD itself, so create things like storage pools, networks, and the like, uh, but also create instances, create profiles, create volumes, and can kind of tie everything together. The documentation for the LexD provider specifically, I suspect you can probably just look it up there, um, but I already have it open. Yeah, it's not the best search result ever. Um, I'm guessing that's probably the one we want, yeah. Anyway, um, if we go from there, we can then go look at the documentation for it. And here we go. So that's the LexD provider for Terraform. And this comes with, um, in this case, the instructions for like how to set up a remote if you don't want to just drive your local system. In the demo I'm going to be doing shortly, I'm just going to be using it against the local system, so you don't need to do any or not. Uh, it can be significantly shorter, uh, but it does support uh, interacting with remote XD as well, uh, which is quite convenient. As far as what it can drive, so that's the, the list of resources. Uh, it's it's able to do some amount of um, handling of the, the cached images. It supports containers, but containers have actually been um, extended a bit lately to also support virtual machines. So if we look here at the type, uh, it does support virtual machine. It's quite possible that uh, soon enough this is going to get renamed or duplicated as instance to just kind of remove some of the awkwardness there. Uh, but I guess one thing that's worth mentioning there is that LexD, the, the Terraform provider for, for LexD, just like the uh, LexD connector for Ansible, those are not written by the LexD team. Uh, they're, writing, they're written by community members. And like occasionally we will um, give a hand here and there if there's like specific questions or APIs are missing or something in LexD, but we didn't write them. Um, that being said, uh, we might be able to contribute here and there to kind of extend some specific areas or get maybe uh, coverage of areas of LexD that we think are, are important to, to get covered. So, the container one lets you create instances effectively. Uh, you can do configuration devices, a whole bunch of uh, the things you would expect. Uh, it also supports uh, proxy devices. It supports quite a lot of things um, with some abstractions in place and some other things you can just do pretty low level, uh, effectively matching what's in the LexD API. It's also possible to actually transfer files into the instance, which can be useful to maybe put just simple things like SSH keys and that kind of stuff in place so that you can then manage uh, the instance with some other tool after it's been created. It does let you uh, create networks. 
with the usual setup in the configs. It does support uh, some of the slightly more complicated stuff around uh, doing VXLAN tunneling and the like. There's a few examples and also how to do it um, in a clustered environment. Profile is one thing I'm going to be using in the demo, so how to define uh, profiles and how you can kind of refer to them within uh, your Terraform file. Projects are supported too now, so you can actually create like defined projects in there, uh, and you can also effectively set it whenever you create another resource. In this case, a, in this case, an instance where you can set that uh, you want it in a specific project. Uh, it can do publishing of a instance as an image, so it's got support for that. Uh, you can also define that you want snapshot to get created that way. Configure storage pools directly. Uh, it's pretty similar to what you can do with networks. Create uh, custom storage volumes on those storage pools. Attach those to uh, existing containers. And also uh, copy those, those volumes. All right. So um, now I'm just trying to get started here. If I go into a terminal, so that's a virtual machine that's running uh, a freshly initialized, but em otherwise empty LXD, so it's XD 514. There's nothing on there. And the first thing we need to do is actually getting Terraform onto that system. So I'm just going to go on the Terraform uh, download page and grab the correct version for my system. So in this case, I'm getting Linux AMD64, getting the link, and then moving that here. There we go. So I can then unzip the Terraform. I'm just going to be lazy and put it in user local bin so that it's readily available. And now we can create a new folder. And just to make sure if we run Terraform, okay, the command exists, we are good. Now, let's just create a Terraform definition, definition file here. And I'm mostly going to go from uh, what's, what's described in the um, Terraform provider uh, documentation for the LexD, LexD provider. So the first thing we need to do is just actually define that we want to use it. And in this case, it spins a specific version. I don't think we necessarily need to do that. Um, let's see what happens if we just remove it. And in this case, it actually has nothing defined in it. Uh, so we're just going to try to run Terraform and run Terraform in it. So it's going to go and fetch the needed provider here. So we see that it went straight for v1.110. Uh, Downloaded, installed, we're good. Now, if we go back here, um, there's actual, we don't actually need to configure anything onto LXT itself. So we'll just leave that section empty. And um, I'm going to go with one of the examples for a profile. So we effectively want here to define a new resource, which is of type LXT profile. We'll call it P1. It's going to need to have a name. So the name is going to be P1. Uh, and then we can give it some amount of configuration. So let's say we set it up to have four CPUs and let's give it four gigs of RAM as well. Okay, so that's just a profile defined on its own. Uh, at, at this point, if we were, I mean, we can, we can actually do that. So if we can, if we go back to Terraform, uh, there's a Terraform plan command. Okay, there's a Terraform validate to make sure that everything is valid. Then you get a Terraform plan. It shows you what would happen. And in this case, it shows that uh, one thing needs to be added, and that's the profile which is defined. Um, if we run Terraform apply, it will show you the same thing. If you just say yes to applying it, then it goes ahead and does it. And now it's done. It's here. Now, if we do Terraform apply, nothing has changed, nothing to be done. Okay. Um, let's see if we can maybe give it a description. Okay. Let's again do a validate. Very good. Plan. Plan shows that there's one change that needs to happen, which is the description is incorrect. 
Okay, go ahead. Modification done with better description. Um, so that works pretty well. Like effectively, Terraform keeps track of what it has done. Uh, it's got like a small database file on the on the side as a as a state file, uh, and then can effectively compare what's in NextD to what's supposed to be in NextD, and then apply any of the changes that needed. So that works pretty well, but that doesn't do anything super useful to us at this point. So um, how about we create the storage volume, and then we attach it. We also create a container and attach it to it. So under resource, uh, it's going to be LixD volume. Uh, let's call it vol1. Again, with the name, so vol1 here. It's, uh, storage pool is the default storage pool. And I uh, should be able to do config as well. Oops. So let's do config. We'll give it a size of one gigabyte. Okay, so if I were to then do again Terraform validate, we're good, Terraform plan, it shows that it would create that storage volume. Um, now let's not do that right now and instead go on to the next stage, which is going to be a LXT container. Uh, so it's going to call it C1. The name for it is C1. And actually, I need to look at the correct documentation on the side for that. So, LXD container. There we go. Okay. Um, so, we need an image. And it takes uh, conveniently the same syntax as the CLI. So, we can just do say Ubuntu 22.04. Um, and say the profiles list. I'm trying to remember how that's what the syntax looks like for that. For a list in that thing. Okay, yeah, just like that. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, we'll do profile default, and then for the other profile, we're just gonna refer to the name of the profile we defined above. Uh, so in this case, it's lexinoscope profile dot p one dot name. Yes, it technically is just p one, uh, but that does give the clear dependency that we need that profile to kind of exist so that we can get its name. So that way, there's a bit more knowledge going into Terraform as to what we're trying to do here. Okay, so now we've got a container with its profile set, that's cool, um, but we still don't have that volume. So uh, for that, what we need to do is actually define the relationship between the two. So in the, in the container itself here, we're gonna be defining a new device. So we do device, the name, let's call it val1. Its type is disk and the properties we need on the device. Let's do the device config here. Is the path is where it's gonna be mounted. So let's do SRV well one. And then the source of it is the volume we created, so it's let's see the volume dot vol one dot name. And the pool for that one is going to be whatever pool was defined on the volume as well. So it's well, one dot pool. Okay. So with this, we should be getting a container called C1 that's got both the default profile and our custom profile applied. So it's going to have four gigs, uh, four CPU, four gigs of RAM, and it's going to get a new volume that's going to get created one gig large, and it's going to have the um, Going to be attached to SRV vol1 effectively. And we could obviously like add other things like descriptions and things on all of those, um, or custom config or any of that. So let's see if all of it is looks good. Yeah, validate is happy. Plan will show that we would indeed create a container with a custom volume. Okay. And so if we do apply, it shows us the same thing, we say yes, and now the volume got created and just waiting for the container to also get created and started. Still creating it. There we go. Okay. Container is running. We look at the container config. 
uh, we can see that it's got vol1 attached to it. It's good. If we look at the expanded config, so including the profiles, now we can see that we also have the limits that are applied. So that should give us exactly what we want. So if we go in there. Okay. And we can see it is mounted and it's one gigs large. So that worked perfectly. Um, and now to just check the enforcement a bit more. So if we go and actually edit that container and say, let's remove the vol one device that should cause a discrepancy between the current state in next day. Um, I think if you go look in there, it should be gone now. Yep. And what's in Terraform. So if we do Terraform plan, there we go. It shows that it will be updated in place and that what gets done is adding a device into it. Okay. So let's just do apply. Okay. Go back in there and the storage is back in. So that's pretty convenient because it's not just, you know, your initial creation, but also some tool you can run to make sure that nothing has gotten misconfigured, that nothing has been dropped, uh, depending on what you're using as far as providers and backends, like maybe an update has changed some settings. Uh, maybe, you know, that kind of stuff can happen and rerunning uh, Terraform is going to pick up anything that might have changed, compare it to what you are expecting and then make it, make it line up again. And that's pretty much it. As I said, like, I'm definitely not an expert in Terraform. I have maybe a few hours of playing with it at this point, um, but it's definitely a very common tool. Uh, and it's great to see that LexD is supported alongside a wide variety of, um, of different clouds. And it's great to see that uh, this was contributed uh, by community members and it's actively being updated. Uh, I believe I've seen the last update uh, was just a couple of days ago. So this is quite actively being maintained with um, new things being contributed. So if you're, if you're trying to use it and you're missing anything, I'm sure that they will very much welcome uh, any contributions you might have uh, or just finding issues and the links to all of that will be down in the description, but also available through the uh, Terraform registry. Hopefully uh, this was, this was something that was quite useful um, to you and something you might be using in the future for, for your projects. Just getting back there. Um, it's got the links, as I said, like you can report issues. It gets you straight to the GitHub uh, page for the project. You can see what's currently open. Um, there's currently pull request here going on. Um, and as I said, this is quite actively being worked on with the last change uh, having happened on it just two days ago. All right, well, hopefully something useful to you. Um, if you've got any questions about it, Feel free to leave them down the, uh, below in the, the comment section. Or, otherwise, you can go on the community forum or you can, uh, I'm sure, reach out directly to the Terraform uh, provider LexD uh, team and send your suggestions, questions, patches, fixes over there. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye.